right, all right. What's up, everyone? So I'm just going to kind of jump right into things. And as usual, please ask questions as I kind of storm along through some really cool theory concepts and stuff like that. So um, let's make me a bit larger. But um, so the first thing that I'm going to kind of go over, since this is strictly for beginners. So if you're not a beginner in music theory, this live stream might not be for you. I have more advanced ones um, that I'm going to be doing, but I want to catch everybody up to speed. So this is probably going to be about a half hour or so. It's not going to be a ton of your time. So if you pay attention, I'm sure that you will at least get things started with your brain on music theory. So if you're starting from the very beginning of music theory or like the bare bones of it, the first thing to understand is that there are in like we're talking Western harmony, there's 12 notes total, right? So there are 12 notes total. So if you look at something like a piano, you'll notice there's like 50 bajillion keys. Like on a grand piano, I think there's 88. But out of all of those keys that you see, there are 12 notes and then everything just repeats from there. That's what we call an octave. Okay. So we're just starting bare bones here. So 12 notes. Okay. After you go through all 12, everything just repeats. Okay. So what exactly are those 12 notes? Well, if we start with the regular alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, yada, 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 we're going to stop at G and we're going to reset from there. So all we have is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, right? Okay. So that's the very beginning. And then the other ones, the next five are going to be our sharps and our flats. Okay. So let's briefly take a look at some sharps or flats. Okay. So pretty much what you need to understand is that every single key is going to have uh, sharps. I'm sorry. Every single note is going to have sharps or flats, right? Except for B and C and E and F. Okay. Um, so let me show you a keyboard real quick. But -dum -ba -dum. Here's the keyboard. I'm just kidding. All right. So we got our piano here. Let's just go with this one because it's going to make our lives a lot easier. So um, maybe I could get an even bigger one like this one. Hell yeah. Okay. So this is a good example. Okay. So pretty much all of the black keys are our sharps and our flats. Okay. So a half step is going up one key and a full step is going up or, and a full step is going up two keys. Okay. So let me give you an example. The note right here is a C. The note right here is a C sharp because we went up a half step. Okay. You'll notice that every single white key has a sharp or a flat in between, except for these two, which is E and F. Okay. And let's go with this one real quick. So we have E and F right here, but then we also have B and C, which is right here. Okay. So if you're on the note F, which is right here, going up a half step would be to F sharp, right? Going up a full step would be to the note G, okay? So if this makes sense, just let me know, but I'm going to kind of keep going. So 12 notes in total, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of them have a sharp next to it. So if you go from A, you hit A sharp, except for B and C and E and F. So that means if you're at the note B, you just go right to C. There's no such thing as B sharp in simple terms, and there's no such thing as E sharp, okay? Flats are the same thing, just going backwards. So flats depend on kind of your context and it kind of depends on, um, on the key signature, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, but, um, that's pretty much how it works. So if you were on the note E right here, go back a half step and you'd be at your E flat. Okay. So in, in a nutshell, that's kind of how the 12 notes in the 12 tone system kind of works in Western harmony. Okay. So let me know if this kind of makes sense here a little bit as I'm kind of continuing on, but we're just going to keep kind of ripping through everything. So we have 12 notes, right? Okay. So in music, we have something called keys. Okay. We have something called keys, key signatures and all that stuff. Okay. And we're just going to go right into the circle of fifths. Okay. So the circle of fifths essentially is going to tell us, um, everything about music literally like everything about music is going to have to do with this wheel here so if you guys can understand this concept 
you will be pretty much completely golden. So I'm going to zoom in even more here so that way we can really see it. All right. So now kind of the concept that I want you guys to look at here is that I said that there are 12 notes in total. If you look at this, it literally is the shape of a clock. Okay, so right here at C major would be 12 o'clock, A major would be 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock would be over here at F sharp. Okay, so look at it like a clock because a clock has 12 numbers and the circle of fifths has 12 keys. Okay, and a key in music is kind of like where the song starts, where the song ends, the scale that we use. Okay, the outside of the wheel are our major keys and then the inside of the wheel, the green, is our minor keys. Okay, so... I know I'm going quite fast here, but just kind of kind of keep your brain fired on that a little bit. Okay, but we're focusing on major right now, so we're only doing the outside. So real quick, every single major scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, has seven different notes. So every single major scale uses the same whole step, half step method. Okay, so don't worry about memorizing that right now. We're just trying to understand the concept of the wheel, essentially. So if you can kind of understand that, you will really, really thrive here. And the key signature, the key itself is like the, the C, the G, the D. That's just like where we start. The key signature tells us the exact notes that are in the scale. Okay. So if we're on the, if we're in the key of C major up here at 12 o'clock, there are no sharps and there are no flats in your scale or in your uh, key. Okay. If you go up a fifth, right here into G, you're going to end up having one sharp and that's an F sharp. If you don't understand how to read clef yet, do not worry. This is not something that's important right now. It's something that we're just trying to understand the basic concepts of music theory, right? So going further with this, if we like, let, let's do another example. Okay. If we're in the key of D major, that means that if you play the D major scale, you're going to end up hitting these two sharps in that scale. So you'll realize that every time you keep going clockwise, you add an extra sharp into the key. And then every time I'm going to go over the flats in a second here, but we're just thinking of clockwise first. So basically the circle of fifths essentially tells you this. If you're in C major and you go up a fifth, which when we count in music, don't worry about the sharps or flats yet count C as one. So C, D, E, F, G, G major is where we start now. And that has one sharp. So pretty much every time you go up a fifth, you add a sharp to the key signature. Okay. So you see G has one sharp, go up a fifth from G is D. Then you have two sharps, go up a fifth from D to A as three sharps. So if you know how to, if you don't know how to count music, just don't worry about sharps or flats and start and count where you start as one. So if you're in the key of A major right here at three o'clock, Go up a fifth, A, B, C, D, E. E major now has four, okay? So that's essentially how the circle of fifths work going clockwise, okay? So you can go as far as you'd like technically up until you get to the bottom here at C sharp, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, so that's the concept of the sharps, okay? And the nice part is, is when you are looking at the key signature, when you guys start to get better at reading clef, like I'll give you a pointer here, like if you're just thinking every good boy does fine for reading here, that this is an F sharp, okay? So all you'd really have to do is bring F sharp over to this key here, and then go up a fifth from F sharp to get the next key. So F, G, A, B, C sharp would be your next uh, key signature bring those two over and then go up a fifth from C sharp. And that would be G sharp. Okay. So pretty much the key signatures work in that sort of general direction. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of how this stuff works in a brief nutshell. Okay. So <clears throat> let me know if this makes sense. Okay. But I'm going to keep going. Okay. So the flats literally work in the same way, except it's in fourth. Some people get a little more confused with the flats and I'll show you why here in a second. But basically if you start at C major, always start at C major. You should always know that C major is your baseline. Okay. Um, that's where you always start. If you go counterclockwise, go up in fourth. So C D E F F is up a fourth. Okay. If you can memorize that this has a B flat in it. So the third line, um, that's going to help you drastically here. Okay. So B flat is your, um, is your key. Okay. Or I'm sorry, in your key signature. So now here's what we do. We go up a fourth from F, F, G, A, B. The thing is, is F major had a B flat in the key sig. So that's the next key right here. This is where people get confused because the key signature 
of F major is the next key. So don't get those two confused. It's a really confusing, but think of it like this, like up a fourth from F, F, G, A, B is B. But remember, we have to use this key signature when we count. So we have to apply this to this basically. So it's a B flat. Okay. So the, um, the exact key signature stuff right here, um, if you drag this over, right, B flat gets dragged over here, then go up a fourth, B, C, D, E flat, okay? So pretty much the key and the key signature goes up in fourths, okay, if you go this way. And then it goes up in fifths if you go this way, okay? So now here's the hard part. If I take this away, are you going to be able to just know it off the top of your head? If I say, hey, what is the key of E major? And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're going to memorize it. Don't worry. It's not going to take you 10 years to figure that out. For now, it will. But what you're going to do now is you're going to start at C and you're going to be in clockwise, okay? Because the ones with the sharps are clockwise. The ones with the flats are counterclockwise. The only thing you need to know about the flats is F major is the only one that doesn't have a flat next to it. Everything else does. Okay. But anyways, E major. So here's what you do. Start it. Start at C, right? That's our baseline at 12 o'clock on the clock. Go up a fifth. That's G, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. That is one sharp. I'm going to keep this a tally right here. G up a fifth, G, A, B, C, D. D major has two up a fifth from D, D, E, F, G, A, that has three, right? So we're in A major, that is three. And then A, B, C, D, E, that has four. So that has four. Now the hard part obviously is knowing the exact sharp. So like I said, start with G major, know that G major has an F sharp, drag it over and then count up a fifth from F sharp, that's C sharp. And then you drag these two over, count up a fifth from C sharp, that's G sharp. So everything in music is gonna be a lot of counting, okay? If you can do basic counting, um, and you can just kind of wrap your brain around this wheel, you'll understand all of these uh, basic concepts here. Okay, so we're going to keep knocking this stuff out. Okay, I'm just firing up through this. Okay, this is supposed to be a lecture. So pay attention. Okay, so the last part that I'm going to say about the circle of fifths is the inside of the wheel are your relative minor. Okay, so for every major key, there's a minor key that share the same exact um, notes in the scale, okay? And I'll show you the whole steps and the half steps of the scale in a second. But basically, all you need to think about is this. If you're in the key of C major, you can also technically use the key of uh, A minor, and it'll be the exact same notes, okay? I know it sounds really weird just saying that out loud, but um, for now, the concept is basically this. If you're in a major key, all you'd have to do is go back three half steps, and then that's your relative minor. So like, let's take, uh, I'm going to repeat that again. If you're in a major key, go back three half steps and then you're at your relative minor. So if you're in the key of G major, three half steps back from G is what? G flat F E. So E minor right here is our relative minor. So th in theory, you can shred with G major and E minor, and they're both going to sound very, very similar together. Now, obviously, in context, a minor key sounds different. It sounds darker. That's where the whole steps and half steps come in. Okay, so that's how um, that's how the uh, hang on here. That's how the uh, the circle of fists work. Okay, the whole step half step pattern, basically, like just doing a simple Google search will tell you everything with this stuff. So, okay. So all major scales follow this exact pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Okay. So remember a whole step up two keys or two frets, a half step is up one. Okay. So you'll see right here, uh, there we go. So you'll see right here, this whole ordeal is basically a whole step, a whole step, a half step, whole, 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 half. Okay. Minor. It's a different formula, but it just happens to lay out in the fact that if you go back three half steps, it's the same, it's the same notes. Okay. So this is where like when people write music and stuff, they often use these whole steps and these half steps to, um, to really get a good grip on <clears throat> composing. Okay. Excuse me. <clears throat> so let's grab a water here. Cause I'm going to fire through this. Mm-hmm. All right, so now now that we understand the whole step, half step pattern, and we understand the circle of this, if you don't know this, go back into the video and rewatch it. You're going to have to rewatch this a couple of times. Okay, but the next concept is to understand how chords work. 
okay? Because if there are seven notes in a scale, okay, like C, D, E, F, G, A, B, that's seven notes. I can make chords out of any of those notes, okay? And a chord is literally what we call a triad, okay? And the formula for a triad is root, third, fifth, okay? So how does this work? Well, remember when I talked about counting in music and how when you count in a scale, you have to count where you start as one? So if you made a triad of C major, you'd start at the note C, okay, which is your one, count up a third from C, C, D, E, okay, that's 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 your third right there, the fifth, C, D, E, F, G, okay, so C, E, G, that would be your major triad, okay, let's try another one, if I wanted, if I was like, hey, can you make me a G major triad, you would basically have to do this, Start at G as your roots, count up three from G, counting G as one, G, A, B, and then count up a fifth from G, G, A, B, C, D. Boom. That's your roots. That's your third. And that is your fifth. So G, B, D. The hard part is this. Okay. Remember when I said how important the circle of fifths was? Well, that's where this stuff is going to kind of end up coming into play because the circle of fifths is going to have to be applied to know whether it's a major chord or a minor chord okay so check this out if i asked you to make i don't know like let's say i asked you to make a a major triad okay typically in your brain you'd probably think okay that's easy a is our root c is our third and then e is our fifth the problem with that is the key signature needs to be applied so i see you for a major so go to the a major key signature you'll notice that there's a C sharp in there. So C sharp has to be applied to the chord. Okay, that's where the circle of this comes in. If I asked you something else, like if I said, oh, can you make me a G minor triad? It's not gonna be G, B, D, it's gonna be G, B flat, D because the key signature up here applies to it. So you have to, have to, have to know your circle of fifths like a crazy person, okay? I know I always say that all the time, but it's like, it's so important that you really understand this concept. Okay, but the last thing that I'm going to say about chords is this. You can do it with the wheel or you can do it with the whole step half step method, which gets into what we're going to talk about real quick is our last thing that we're going to talk about is intervals. Okay, so we've already been doing intervals, which is the nice thing because an interval is the space between two notes. So when somebody says go up a fifth, that is an interval like C to G is a fifth. That's the interval. We're going to call that a perfect fifth. Okay, so. For intervals, you're basically looking at a scale, a seven note major scale, and you're basically thinking, okay, if I go from C to E, that's a major third because that's in the major uh, scale. But if I go C to E flat, that is a minor third because that would apply to the minor scale. You can look at the circle of fifths this way. Or C to E is how many half steps? Let's see. We have to C sharp, then we have to D, then we have D sharp, then we have E. So it's basically two whole steps, right? Is that's a, probably an easier way to say it, two whole steps, okay? But then the uh, minor, like a, a minor third is one whole step and then one half step. So that's the big difference here, guys, is you need to understand those whole steps and half steps, and then you need to basically um, count is essentially what we're doing. So let's let me give you another example. We're going to talk about major third, keep talking about major third, and then we're going to talk about minor third, okay? So if we were on the note D, okay, a major third would be what? Two, ha two whole steps up, so that would be what? F sharp. But then if we only wanted the minor third, it would be F natural. Or look at the key signature. In the key of D major, there's an F sharp. In the key of D minor, up here, right here on the inside, there's no F sharp. You're, you're good to go. There's only a B flat and that doesn't apply to the triad. So that's essentially how our intervals work. Let me give you an example of um, our intervals of the major scale. Okay, so this is the last concept that you just kind of have to understand is this bad boy right here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of drag through some of this and you guys will be kind of good to go. So basically, the unison is just the same note. Don't worry about that. It's too easy. A major second, right? C to D. A major third, C to E. Perfect fourth is C to F. I'll talk about why it's perfect here in a second. Don't worry. Perfect fifth, C to G. Major sixth. I'm sorry. Minor sixth is what it should be. It's what it should be, but this has a capital. So um, this should be minor third too, um, which I'll tell. Oh, I'm sorry. Major third, major sixth. 
um had that confused for a second but this is all yeah all major because it's all from the major scale so just ignore what i just said there um major seventh right here is c to b and then the octave is right there okay so what is the difference between major intervals minor intervals and perfect intervals well basically the concept is this the perfect the word perfect basically means it doesn't matter if you're playing a major scale or a minor scale that note is not going to change okay so if you play a c minor scale um the basically this this e becomes e flat right this uh sixth becomes a flat and then the seventh becomes b flat these two are not going to change the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth are not going to change the op the octave is not going to change the unison is not going to change the the major second can stay okay but um for music practical purposes the minor second is technically going to be d flat okay that's a whole nother topic but right now just understand the major scale intervals is that if you go up a, a perfect fourth from c c d e f that's an f okay if you go up a major sixth from c c d e f g a okay if it was a minor six you change that a to an a flat because in the circle of fifths in the key signature in c minor there's an a flat in there okay so that essentially is the entire concept of the major scales the minor scales okay and all that stuff so to recap here what we've gotten through is we understand that there are 12 notes okay we've got the circle of fifths we've got how to build uh scales with the whole step half step pattern major scale first is most of what we're talking about we've got the relative keys on the inside of the wheel which is three half steps back from your major uh key okay and then we've got how to build triads okay and we've got how to uh count intervals okay and that is pretty much it guys that was a very fast and good lecture um i didn't have as much time today but i will see you guys in the next live stream and take care